Welcome back fellow learners, to a hazard-free journey of Module 7. Before we proceed, let's take a moment to rewind for a quick recap of Module 6, focusing on struck by and caught in between hazards. Imagine being stuck between giant machines, unable to move, fear gripping your heart. You pray for help, knowing one wrong move could mean the end. It's a real fear for workers, yet preventable with now as we gear up for module 7 let me pause and emphasize the importance of hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell icon by doing so you'll stay updated with the latest information and invaluable insights but here's a crucial pointer make sure you've caught up on the previous modules think of them as your guiding stars illuminating the path for what lies ahead in this educational journey Let's start Module 7 which highlights fall protection, a pivotal aspect of the construction industry. Did you know that, falls are the leading cause of fatalities in construction, accounting for about one-third of all industry-related fatalities? It is a staggering statistic that underscores the urgency and significance of this module's content. Under the guidelines set by OSHA, Employers are responsible for providing fall protection for their employees. This includes identifying and evaluating fall hazards, as well as offering comprehensive training. Employers have the flexibility to select fall protection measures that align with the nature of the work being undertaken. This module is divided into two parts. First up, fall protection, followed by the equally crucial inspection and safety monitoring systems. But hold on, there's more in store, let's unlock those terms buzzing around this module. Let's start with Anchorage, a secure attachment point for lifelines, lanyards, or deceleration devices. Ever wondered about body belts or body harnesses? These are like trusty sidekicks, securing around the waist or distributing fall arrest forces over the thighs, pelvis, chest, and shoulders, keeping our heroes safe. Now, connectors might seem small, but they're mighty, they bridge the gap, ensuring every part of the safety system remains steadfast and secure. Say hello to the controlled access zone, a marked off area where specialized work happens. Without standard fall protection, it's a shield ensuring worker safety within that designated zone. Zooming into deceleration devices, these are the unsung heroes, ropes grab, or specialized lanyards are designed to reduce energy during a fall, silently protecting our workers from harm. Imagine a guardrail system, standing tall like a fortress erected to prevent our heroes from taking a tumble to lower levels, it's a sturdy barrier, ensuring safety at every step. What is whole, it is a void in a surface larger than 2 inches, posing a potential hazard. Lanyard, a flexible line of rope, wire rope, or strap connecting body belts or body harnesses to various safety devices, acting as a lifeline for our workers. Leading edge, the constantly changing edge of surfaces during construction, demanding extra caution. And what's a lifeline? Not just a sea term, it's a flexible line connecting securely to anchorages, ensuring our heroes stay securely fastened during their daring feats. Say hello to opening, a wall or partition gap posing a fall risk if exceeding certain dimensions. Personal fall arrest system, a comprehensive safety system prohibiting the use of body belts for fall arrest since January 1, 1998. Positioning device system, allowing hands-free work on vertical surfaces, ensuring safety and productivity. Rope grab, a device swiftly engaging on a lifeline to arrest falls, keeping our workers secure. Safety Monitoring System, a safety system in which a competent person is responsible for recognizing and warning employees of fall hazards. Self-Retracting Lifeline, a responsive device that automatically locks to prevent falls during normal movement or emergencies. Steep Roof, a roof having a slope greater than 4 in 12, vertical to horizontal. Unprotected sides and edges, any side or edge, except at entrances to points of access, of a walking or working surface, e.g., floor, roof, ramp, or runway, where there is no wall or guardrail system at least 39 inches, 1 meter, high. Walking slash working surface, every surface where work occurs, excluding ladders or vehicles. 
in last warning line system, an alert system on roofs, signaling approaching danger areas and allowing specific work within caution boundaries. Welcome to the first lesson about fall protection. Imagine you are working up high, focused on the job, when suddenly, you lose your balance, and start to fall, it's scary and painful, and the fear grips you instantly, as you imagine the horror your family would face, if they lost you. But hold on, there are ways to prevent falling. Firstly, let's face the stark reality, falls are the leading cause of fatalities in the construction industry. It's a sobering fact that emphasizes the critical need for robust safety measures. Now, picture this scenario. If an employee faces the risk of falling 6 feet, 1.8 meters, or more from an unprotected side or edge, it's imperative for the employer to step in, they must provide a safety net, guardrail, or personal fall arrest system to shield the worker from potential hazards. But that's not all, employees working near wall openings, especially those with significant height differences, between the outside and inside edges, require specific protection measures, if the outside bottom edge of a wall opening is 6 feet or more above lower levels, and the inside bottom edge is less than 39 inches, 1.0 meter, above the walking or working surface, safeguards like guardrail systems, safety nets, or personal fall arrest systems are non-negotiable. Let's talk safety nets. They must have a border rope with a minimum breaking strength of 5,000 pounds, that's some serious strength to ensure our safety nets do their job effectively. Now, here's a golden rule, inspect, inspect, and inspect, every component of a fall arrest system needs a thorough check before use, and crucially, after any impact, any defective components must be swiftly removed from service to maintain the integrity and reliability of the system. Now it's time to experience the life-saving power of fall protection in action. And now, to put your knowledge to the test, here are some study questions. Let's dive into the second lesson on inspection and safety monitoring systems. It is packed with critical points. First, it's essential to note that body belts won't cut it. When it comes to fall arrest, they cannot be used for fall arrest purposes. This emphasizes the need for proper equipment, designed specifically for this crucial task. When it comes to lanyards and vertical lifelines, strength matters. They must have a minimum breaking strength of 5,000 pounds, ensuring they can bear the weight and pressure during potential falls. Here's an interesting tidbit, lanyards should be attached to a D-ring between the shoulder blades above the employee. Precision in attachment can make a significant difference in ensuring maximum safety during operations. Now, let's talk about snap hooks and D-rings. They're the unsung heroes, both must have a tensile strength of 5,000 pounds and be proof tested to 3,600 pounds. It's all about the strength and resilience of these components that form the backbone of safety equipment. It's a rule of thumb, use only one snap hook per D-ring. This practice prevents rollout, ensuring stability and security when using snap hooks in fall protection systems. Lock it down, all snap hooks must have a locking mechanism, it's an additional layer of safety, ensuring the connections stay firmly secured during operations. Now, it's time to identify the hazard from this picture and comment below. Ever heard of a positioning device system? This system is designed to allow employees to work hands-free on an elevated vertical surface while being securely supported by a body belt or body harness, it's a game-changer for those high-rise tasks. But here's a critical reminder, a positioning device system is not a fall arrest system. It's essential to differentiate between these systems to ensure the right equipment is used for the right purposes. Now, let's shift focus to safety monitoring. Employers must designate a competent person to monitor the safety of other employees. This person must be on the same surface, within sight and oral communication range, and focus solely on their monitoring role. 
The fall protection plan option exists for specific cases where conventional fall protection equipment isn't feasible or may create greater hazards. This option applies to employees involved in certain tasks like leading edge work, precast concrete erection, or residential construction, provided they can demonstrate the infeasibility or heightened risk of using conventional fall protection. Let's wrap it up with some study questions. Now, let's move to heart-wrenching statistics that reveal the harsh reality. In 2021, the Bureau of Labor Statistics documented a staggering 378 out of 986 construction fatalities attributed to fall hazards. Cast your mind back to 2019, falls accounted for a staggering 36.4% of the total number of fatalities in the construction industry. Then in 2020 when OSHA reported 351 fatal falls. These aren't just numbers, their lives, mothers, fathers, sons, and daughters lost due to preventable incidents. Each statistic represents a story untold, a potential future extinguished, and a community impacted. These numbers are a somber reminder of the urgent need for robust safety measures and unwavering vigilance in every workplace. Here are some invaluable tips that can serve as guardians against fall hazards on construction sites. Firstly, knowledge is power. Ensure all workers receive thorough training on fall prevention, proper equipment usage, and safety protocols. Equipping them with this knowledge is like arming them with a shield against potential hazards. Regular inspections are crucial. Keep a keen eye on all fall protection equipment, ensuring they are not only in good working condition but also meet stringent safety standards. This regular upkeep ensures that our safety tools remain reliable guardians. Guardrails and towboards act as silent sentinels, erect them on scaffolds, elevated platforms, and open edges to act as a formidable barrier, preventing potential falls and ensuring a safer workspace. Safety nets are the safety nets of our safety measures. Use them as an additional layer of protection to catch workers or debris in case of a fall, providing a reassuring safety backup. Let's play it safe with clear markings and barricades. Clearly designate and barricade hazardous areas or surfaces prone to fall risks. It's like setting up a warning beacon, guiding everyone away from potential dangers. Empower your workforce, encourage them to be vigilant and report any unsafe conditions or hazards they notice. Their proactive approach can prevent accidents before they even have a chance to occur. Last but not least, preparedness is key. Have a comprehensive emergency response plan in place, complete with rescue procedures. It's the safety net for our safety measures, ensuring a swift and effective response if a fall incident occurs. And here's your chance. Got any queries or thoughts to share? Don't hesitate, the comment section below is all yours. As we gear up for Module 8, brace yourselves for even more excitement ahead. Remember to subscribe and press the bell icon to stay updated, until then, take care and stay safe.